Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. Today we're gonna tackle a topic that I think is pretty cool to talk about. We're gonna be ranking the most powerful and effective agents of the shadow during the books. Now, as always, I will have a ridiculous ranking system to formulate my thoughts, and I'm excited to see if you guys agree with my list. Now, before getting into the list, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to placate the YouTube algorithm gods. That helps the channel grow. Thank you for doing it. We'll also throw up a spoiler warning. This video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through A Memory of Light, the final book in the series. If you have not finished all of the books yet, watch this at your own risk. So as you can see, this is gonna be like a ranking list and it's actually gonna have a lot of rankings. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain my ranking criteria super fast so we can get into the list itself. First of all, I wanna preface that this is simply not a who would win in a fight. Uh, I have one of my scores that kind of gauges that, but it is not the only metric that I am kind of ranking them on here. This is a list of the most powerful and effective agents of the shadow, not just the best in a fight. I used four criteria and I gave them all a score out of 10. The first criteria I used was fighting ability, which is essentially who would win in a fight. Theoretically, anybody with a lower score should lose to the people with higher scores here. My second criteria was power and authority, which is basically like, do they command people or are their shadow spawn? Do they have like responsibilities with that? The more people or agents of the shadow that would follow their orders, the higher the score here. The third criteria was intelligence or strategy. Basically, are they smart? Do they come up with good plans? Can they coordinate? That kind of thing. The last criteria is effectiveness. So in other words, did they actually make a difference in the story at all or did everything they tried fail? So let's go ahead and get into the list. Number 27, gray men. So gray men take the number 27 spot on the list as they're probably the least effective agents of the dark one. Now it's not that they don't have power. They do have the ability to become essentially unnoticeable. And for that reason, they are great assassins. But time and time again, they are caught and they serve no other purpose other than to try and assassinate those who aren't looking for them. They're unable to command troops. They have no ability to make any type of intelligent decisions and they are kind of soulless. So for this reason, Greymen get a seven out of 40 and earn the number 27 spot on the list. Number 26, Trollocs. Now coming in at number 26, we have the cannon fodder for the shadow, the Trolloc Hordes. They are larger and more powerful than humans. They're capable of breeding at a fast rate and they are effective frontline soldiers. They are pretty stupid and they need to be driven to do anything that they don't want to do, but they are bloodthirsty and dangerous, which I guess is great for battle troops. They get an 11 out of 40 and they're going to take the number 26 spot on the list. Number 25, Drakkar. Now the Wheel of Time version of vampires take the number 25 spot on the list. Drekgar are winged shadow spawn that have the ability to suck the soul or the life, life essence out of their prey. They were Dementors long before Dementors existed. They can serve as scouts for the shadow and they are adept at surprise attacks from the air. They can kill almost anything if they get the jump on them and their croon will hypnotize prey and make them easy game. However, they are easily killed and they're not that intelligent. They are not able to lead troops. They certainly are not able to make battlefield decisions outside of what they're instructed to do. And they are more of like a special forces unit that needs to be utilized properly to be effective. So in total, Drakkar get a 12 out of 40 and earn the number 25 spot on the list. Number 24, Dark Friends. Now coming in at the number 24 spot on the list, we have the Shadows Network of Dark Friends. The Shadow has Dark Friend agents in every nation of the world and in every station of life. Some are rulers and lords, some are beggars. Dark friends are a highly organized group and they recruit constantly and grow their cells, which is kind of like the groups they work in. While many of them are not that great in combat particularly, they do have a profound effect on the world and they have caused many of the divisions that kind of rack the world as a whole. Dark friends are partially responsible for the fall of Malkir and have been at the core of many of the conflicts in the world. Dark Friends, as a group, get a 14 out of 40 and earn the number 24 spot on the list. Number 23, Dark Hounds. Dark Hounds are a perversion of wolves. They were created by Aganor originally. They are extremely hard to kill and they are utterly deadly. They move in large packs and can devastate entire armies as seen in the last battle. Once they're on the hunt, they will not stop until they get their prey. They have like acid for saliva and some types can be 
only be killed with Balefire. They are not extremely intelligent and do not command other forces though. They are another form of special forces used by the Shadow, just albeit a more effective one. They're going to get a 15 out of 40 and earn the number 23 spot on the list. Number 22, Red Veiled Aiel. Now, while they're technically Dark Friends, the Red Veiled Aiel are Aiel versions of Dark Friends, so they're definitely better. Some were turned to the Shadow and some joined willingly. Many of these Red Veiled Aiel can channel the One Power and they are extremely dangerous. They do not have a prominent role in the story until the last battle, but they are extremely effective and almost defeat the Aiel defending Sheo Ghul. The turned Aiel can be very cruel and vicious, but they don't show much strategy or political power outside of being outstanding fighters. They're going to get a 16 out of 40 and earn the number 22 spot on the list. Number 21, Worms. One of the many shadow spawn that Aganor created were the Jumara, which are large dragon-like creatures that are immune to channeling and are extremely large and terrible looking. Their larval state, however, is as a worm, and entire packs of worms now travel in the Great Blight. They will kill Shadow Spawn or anything else that get in their way. The worms aren't intelligent, they prove to be a formidable barrier in the Blight, and only the experienced really can defeat them. Demon Dread defeats a full grown Jumara in his quest for the Sakarnan Sangreal, and he admits to himself he barely beat it and he knew how. They are extremely dangerous foes, and because of this, the Jumara get a 17 out of 40 and earn the number 21 spot on the list. Number 20, Murdral. Coming in at number 20, we have Murdral, also known as Fades. They are the chance offspring of Trollocs, the combination of the human parts of the Trollocs coming together. They are very intelligent and clever, and they serve as basically the army officers for the forces of the Shadow. They are able to meld into shadows, and they have eyeless faces that project fear and hatred. They carry blades that will kill upon touch, and they are considered more than a match for mortal men in battle. Now, because of their place of command, as well as their battle prowess, Murdral get an 18 out of 40 and earn the number 20 spot on the list. Number 19, the Golom. With the number 19 spot on the list, we have the Golom, a sentient construct that was created during the Age of Legends with the intention of assassinating and killing channelers for the light. There were only seven ever made, and they are completely immune to the effects of the One Power. Additionally, they are inhumanly strong and fast. They can squeeze through stuff like a keyhole. They're very deadly assassins. They blend in with humans. The Golam feed on blood, and they can seemingly only be harmed by certain objects, like Matt's medallion and its copies. The only other weakness that the Golam appear to have is that they need to follow orders. So... There must be some way of controlling them. They are more of a tool than an independent agent. So the Golem gets a 19 out of 40, despite its great power, and it's going to earn the number 19 spot on the list. Number 18, Dreadlords. So the Turned and Dark Friend Ashaman take the number 18 spot on the list. They are extremely powerful combatants. Some of them are very powerful users of the One Power. The Dark Ashaman almost single-handedly win the last battle for the Shadow, and they are almost able to fight off Rand, and if not for Egwene killing many of them with the Flame of Tarvalin, they might have ended the fight early for the Shadow. One reason they aren't higher on this list is they don't really have the political sway that the Black Aja does. They are going to get a 20 out of 40 and earn the number 18 spot on the list. Number 17, Slayer. With the number 17 spot on the list, we have Slayer. Now, Slayer is a creation of the Dark One, the merging of two souls, and basically like the ultimate assassin. He has the ability to step in and out of the World of Dreams, Despite not being able to channel, he has almost complete mastery of the world of dreams as well. So because of these abilities, he can step in and out of the dream anywhere, essentially being able to teleport. He is the most useful tool for the Forsaken and could likely kill some of the Forsaken with some planning if he dared it. He is intelligent, cunning, and very, very dangerous. Because of this, he gets a total score of 21 out of 40 and takes the number 17 spot on the list. Number 16, the Black Aja. Coming in at number 16, we have the Black Aja. Now, the Black Aja was created by Ashamael, and they've basically been a part of the White Tower almost since its inception. They have infiltrated all levels of leadership, and they have influenced world events for centuries. Now, during the story, though, they're effective at causing strife and pain to the Dragon Reborn, breaking apart the White Tower, and they commit a ton of murders. The only knock on them is that their selfishness often keeps them from making super intelligent decisions. So the Black Aja get a 22 out of 40 and they're gonna earn the number 16 spot on the list. Number 15, Aganor. So with the number 15 spot, we have the first of the Forsaken to make the list in Aganor. Aganor is the Forsaken who was the most responsible for creating the Shadow Spawn, although that was during the Age of Legends. 
during the story itself, he is burned to ash at the beginning of the story for drawing too much of the one power at the eye of the world. Something that's kind of odd. Why was he drawing from it anyway? He is returned to life by the Dark One as Osangar, and he masquerades as Korlan Dashiva, and he becomes one of Rand's trusted lieutenants. Now, he's an extremely powerful channeler. He almost kills Rand at the Sun Palace in Kyrian. He commands some of the other rogue Ashaman, and he's a Forsaken, so he's got a high place of leadership among the Shadow. For these reasons, he's going to get a 23 out of 40 and earn the number 15 spot on the list. Number 14, Mogideon. The Spider gets the number 14 spot on the list. Now, Mogideon is a Forsaken who is very adept at surviving. She carries all the authority of a Forsaken with the Shadow, even commanding a group of Black Aja sisters for a while. She's a strong channeler. She's quite intelligent. She just simply has really bad luck in constantly running into Nynaeve, who kicks her ass. <laughs> simply because some of her plans fall through, though, she's going to get a lower spot on the list than many of the other Forsaken. Overall, she's going to get a 25 out of 40 and earn the number 14 spot on the list. Number 13, Asmodian. Now, coming in at number 13 on the list is Asmodian, the Forsaken that almost turned back to the light and followed Rand. Now, I always loved that plot line, and I wished it lasted longer. Asmodian was one of the Forsaken, so he had significant sway in the command structure for the Shadow. Despite being stopped by Rand, he had a significant effect on the Aiel. He caused the Shido Rebellion, uh, kind of, and he came very close to taking the Chodan call for himself, which would have elevated him above, like, everybody. So, for those reasons... Asmodian also gets a 25 out of 40. He earns the number 13 spot on the list. Number 12, Bilal. Now coming in at number 12, we have Bilal, who is also known as the Netweaver. Bilal was a Forsaken, and while he wasn't the strongest channeler of the group, he had all of the authority of being a Forsaken, as well as a reputation as a master tactician. He ruled the Nation of Tyr. He set a plan that almost had Randall Thor defeated. If he hadn't been, like, surprise bail-fired by Moraine... Uh, who he thought he had subdued, by the way, he might have won. Bilal scores a 26 out of 40 and earns the number 12 spot on my list. Number 11, Balthamel. Coming in at number 11, we have Balthamel, and later Arangar. Now, Balthamel, like Aganor, kicks the bucket in his very first appearance, being killed by the Green Man. However, when he is brought back as Arangar and infiltrates Egwene's camp as Halima, she's able to influence events there. Now, Arangar is a Forsaken, meaning that other min minions of the Shadow are going to obey. Balthamel was sort of like a spy master for the Shadow, and he was seemingly quite effective at it. So for those reasons, Balthamel gets a 26 out of 40 and earns the number 11 spot on the list. Now, before diving into the top 10, let me stop and quickly thank the video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a place where you can literally learn to do anything. They have thousands upon thousands of classes that can teach you stuff like video editing, cooking, and even basic financial knowledge. You can take as many of the classes as you want, and it's all for one super low monthly price. I find it incredibly beneficial, and it's something that I use a lot. Skillshare is going to give you a free month of the service to check it out. Just head to the link in the description of the video or on the screen right now and sign up for the free trial. You're going to get a free month to check it out without any commitment. I bet you're going to love it, and you really help out the channel just by checking it out. Again, the courses are really short. It's not like a big commitment, but you can learn a lot of things really well. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. Number 10, Ravine. Now, breaking into the top 10, we have Ravine, who is one of the strongest male Forsaken in terms of how much of the One Power he can hold. He ended up becoming like the de facto ruler of Andor, and almost took Kyrian before being killed by a combination of Rand and Nynaeve. He did great damage to Andor and would have killed Rand had Nynaeve not showed up with Mogideon in tow and set him on fire. Uh, Ravine gets a 27 out of 40 and he earns the number 10 spot on the list. Number 9, Semarag. Coming in at number 9 is Semarag, probably the scariest of the Forsaken and somebody that you would not want to hang out with. She has a reputation as a torturer. She takes sadistic delight in causing pain and breaking people physically and mentally. She was one of the stronger female Forsaken with the One Power, with only really land fear surpassing her. She took a role of great authority within the Shanchen Empire, and eventually killed like the entire ruling family other than Tuan, plunging the entire continent of Shanchan into chaos. She scores a 28 out of 40 and earns the number 9 spot on the list. Number 8, Mazram Taim. With the number 8 spot, we have Mazram Taim. Now, Taim was later raised to the rank of Forsaken by Moradin for his service to the Shadow and training up a bunch of new Dreadlords. He was also an extremely powerful channeler in his own right. 
and caused tons and tons of damage to the forces of the light in the events leading up to the last battle, as well as in the last battle itself. He commands the Dreadlords for the Shadow. That's a position of big authority. So Taim is going to score a 29 out of 40, and he earns the number 8 spot on the list. Number 7, Samael. With the number 7 spot, we have Samael. Now, Samael was one of the military leaders for the Shadow, and in the Third Age, he took over the nation of Ilion. He's considered a strong channeler and a sound tactician, especially in defensive battles. He caused a huge amount of chaos by moving the Shido Aiel all over the Westlands and causing havoc there. He was also responsible for the movement of quite a few Trollocs and other Shadow Spawn around the continent. And again, he almost kills Rand. If not for Moradin's help, he would have killed Rand. Samael scores a 29 out of 40 and earns the number 7 spot on the list. Number 6, Lanfear. Coming into the number 6 spot is the daughter of the night, Lanfear. She is the most powerful female channeler, and, and she's super intelligent and very cunning. Now, she believes herself to be the most powerful in the world of dreams, even if she isn't really, but she is quite strong. She was seen as one of the more powerful Forsaken in terms of command, often seeing herself as a Shamael's equal. Now, she commanded Shadowspawn and Dark Friends and almost succeeded in saving the Dark One from Rand, almost killing him at the very end. The only reason that she isn't higher on the list is that her plans often fail. <laughs> Which, even though she does show herself to be quite formidable, she just doesn't succeed a ton. Lanfear gets a 30 out of 40 and earns the number 6 spot on the list. Number 5, Mesa'ana. Now, breaking into the top 5, we have Mesa'ana. Mesa'ana is a very capable administrator during the War of the Shadow, before being sealed away, but she plays a very important role in the Third Age. She planted herself in the White Tower, and she influenced events there to have the Amarlin deposed, a puppet and very divisive Amarlin and Elida be raised. She also helped split apart the Ajas by having the Black Aja co cause conflict among the sisters in the White Tower. She commanded not only the Black Aja, but as a Forsaken, she had control over Dark Friends and Shadow Spawn, and she was remarkably effective until she was finally defeated by Gwen. She's going to score a 31 out of 40 and earn the number 5 spot on the list. Number 4, Gren Grendel. With the number four spot, we have my favorite Forsaken, Grendel. She was a skilled and renowned psychologist in the Age of Legends, and as a Forsaken, she was very manipulative, cunning, and hedonistic on the exterior, but very focused and very intelligent underneath. She commanded armies of Shadowspawn, had a small army of devoted followers under high levels of compulsion, and she had strategic alliances with other Forsaken that kept her out of harm's way for a time. Now, during the last battle, she almost engineered the complete victory of the Shadow by using compulsion on the Great Captains. She was one of the most effective Forsaken in her plans, and she scores a 33 out of 40 and earns the number 4 spot on the list. Number 3, Demondred. With the number 3 spot on the list, we have Demondred. While absent for most of the story, he builds an enormous power base in Shara, and he fulfills all of their prophecies, basically becoming like a religious figure of sorts there. He was able to lead their armies in the last battle. Additionally, he found and trained Taim and commanded the forces of the Shadow during the last battle. He was also able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Matt as a general, defeated a number of skilled combatants with both the sword and with the one power. He killed a worm. He had a great amount of favor with the Dark One and was given generous use of the true power as a result. Had Moradin died, Demondred probably would have received the title of Nablus. Demondred scores a 35 out of 40 and earns the number 3 spot on the list. Number 2, Shamael. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have Shamael and his later incarnation of Moradin. Now, it's hard to have more authority over the Shadow than Shamael did, as he was the Nablus meaning that he commanded all of the forces of the Shadow and had a direct connection to the Dark One. He also makes exclusive use of the true power because of that connection with the Dark One. He founded and cultivated the Black Aja, set the plans for the last battle into motion, and almost turned the Dragon Reborn to the Shadow through his plans. He was as powerful as a channeler as that was possible to be, and he was extremely knowledgeable, in addition to being a dreamer, and having incredible control in the world of dreams. Ashamael scores a 39 out of 40 and earns the number two spot on the list. Number one, Shaidar Haran. So finally, with the number one spot on the list, we have the mortal incarnation of the Dark One himself, Shaidar Haran. Now, Shaidar Haran was a larger than normal Mordral that served as the vessel for the Dark One to travel around in the world. 
He had unique abilities and essentially was the Dark One's avatar. He could stop channeling from anybody around him. He could easily transport himself anywhere, with his only real limitation being that he couldn't be away from Sheogul that long. He was seen making the Forsaken beg and grovel and punishing them at times, putting him far above them in power. Now, being the avatar of the Dark One, he had literally complete command over the forces of the Shadow, making him the clear top choice for this list. He scores a perfect 40 out of 40. So what do you think of the list? Is there anything that you would change in my rankings? And as a side note, there are some non-combative Shadow Spawn that I left off of this list for the sake of brevity, like Zomara and Forge Masters, as they're more kind of constructs that aren't fighters and don't really have any agency. But let me know what you think of the list in the comments of the video. Also, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel to be reminded when I release new content. Remember to check out Skillshare to get your free month and check out the service. Everyone that I know has used it, loves it, and it's super cheap and you get a lot from it. I know I love it. Special thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel. If you would like to support what I do here, consider checking out the Patreon. You can see the link here or in the description. Thank you to everybody who already supports me there. You guys are what keep the lights on. Thanks for watching, everybody. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. My mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?